Hey everyone, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and welcome to part four of my ultimate guide to Logic Pro. So now let's talk about navigating and playing back your project on the timeline using the transport controls. I'll also demonstrate several time-saving key commands and shortcuts that will help to speed up your Logic Pro workflow. And you know what else is a huge time saver? The sponsor for this video, Boombox. Boombox.io is a really cool new service for audio and music professionals looking to collaborate with other musicians, producers, or mixing clients. With Boombox, you can batch upload your mixes, stems, multi-tracks, or rough musical ideas, invite collaborators to your project, and receive detailed production production feedback on your tracks. All of the feedback is timestamped, so you can easily pinpoint the exact locations in a track where you need to make changes. If you're ready to give Dropbox the boot, head over to boombox.io, sign up for a free account, and it comes with 10 gigabytes of free storage. To demonstrate the transport controls, I'm going to use the same free demo project I included in the previous video, so I'll link to that below if you want to follow along. Now we've already talked about how to play and stop with the space bar, but you can manually start playback with the play button in the transport. And then click the stop button to stop playback. After stopping playback, the stop button becomes the go to beginning button, which returns the playhead back to the beginning of your timeline. But it's much faster just to press return and this will do the same thing. On the left side, you have rewind and forward. So forward jumps the playhead forward by one bar at a time, and rewind sends the playhead backward by one bar at a time. There are some really helpful shortcuts for this. If you use the comma and period keys, you can use these to jump forward and jump back by one bar at a time. I like to think of these by their secondary function, the left and right greater than less than brackets. And if you hold shift while using these keys, you can jump forward by eight bars at a time or jump back by eight bars at a time. So this is really helpful for jumping around and navigating around in your session and to make sure that the playhead is on the correct bar. To the right of the play button, there is a record button. We'll come back to this when we get into MIDI recording and audio recording. But as I demonstrated in a previous video, you can just press R on your keyboard to record. But the next one over is the cycle range. If you click on that, you'll see this range here light up in yellow. This is the cycle range, and the left and right side of the cycle range are called the left and right locators. Now the locators and cycle range can be used for a lot of things, but the number one thing I tend to use it for when it comes to playback and transport is for looping certain areas. The cycle mode is technically speaking a loop mode. So with this highlighted in yellow, you can click on it directly as well. I can put this over here, say on bar five, and then what I'll do is I'll trim this up to bar eight, or the end of bar eight, and now when I press play, it'll just loop these four bars indefinitely. And one thing I really love about the cycle range is even if the playhead is over here, if the cycle range is active and you press spacebar, the playhead will jump all the way over to the beginning of the cycle range. There are also some helpful shortcuts with the cycle range. If you wanna hide and show it, you can just press C on your keyboard and this will toggle the cycle range. Additionally, you can drag over a selection of regions and press Command U, and this will activate the cycle range, but also set the cycle range to the duration of the region selection that you've made. So I find this is really helpful for jumping around to different sections in your project. So if I wanna to listen to this area, I can just Command U. Or if I wanna jump over here, I can select all of this, press Command U again, then Spacebar again. So there's all sorts of helpful ways you can use the cycle range. In addition to the transport controls, you also have the display up here, which tells you various information about your project, as well as the playhead position. So if you click on this little down arrow here, you'll see there are different modes for the display. So right now it's on beats and project. So this shows you the bar and beat position of the playhead. So if I click, say here, this is saying I'm at bar nine, beat 
3. The tempo of the song is 120 BPM. If you want to change that, you can just double click and type in a new tempo. So let me go with like 150 BPM. And depending on what type of content you're using, the regions may conform to the tempo change or they may not. Since I'm using mostly Apple loops here and a few MIDI recordings, all of these regions should conform to the new tempo change. 150 is probably a bit fast, so let me try 128. In addition to the tempo, you can also set the time signature here, or the meter, and then you can also set the key. We'll talk more about this when we get into building a song with loops and how setting the key is really important for certain other elements in your project. But for now, I've set this to C minor. Now, other modes that you can choose from here, there's a beats and project large. There's a beats and time, which shows you beats and time in hours, minutes, and seconds. You have beats and time large. You have just beats, just time, and then my favorite is custom mode, which shows you time, beats. It also shows you the locator selection. So you can see right here as I move the locators around, you can see that the locator selection changes. So the top value is the left locator, and the bottom value is the position of the right locator. And then when you press C to bypass cycle mode, this grays out. Once again, you can adjust the tempo here. There are some smart tempo options. We'll come back to smart tempo later in the series. Your meter, your grid division, we'll come back to this when we start working with MIDI. And no in and no out is your MIDI input and output meter. So if I select one of my software instruments here, and if I play a note on my MIDI controller, you'll see that no in show the MIDI channel, the MIDI note, as well as the velocity of the MIDI note. And what's cool about this is it'll also show you the chords that you play in. So if I play a C minor seven chord, for example, it'll actually show you the name of the chord. So if there's a chord that you're not really sure what it's called, just play it in on your MIDI controller and the MIDI input will show you the name of that chord. So that's an E flat major seven. And to the right of that are the CPU and hard drive meters. You can double click on either of these and this brings up the same dialogue. So this is the performance meter. It shows you all of your processing cores or threads. So you can see I have a eight core processor and 16 total threads. And it also shows you the hard drive usage as well. This is not how much of your hard drive is being used. It's the amount of information that is being accessed on your drive. So if you have too much stuff you're trying to pull off the drive all at the same time, you'll see that the drive IO meter goes up closer to the top. But you can see with a small project like this, Logic is barely using any processing power. So that's the transport controls and display in Logic Pro. In the next video, we'll move on to saving and managing your Logic projects including an explanation of the difference between project packages and project folders. Don't forget to check out the sponsor for today's video, Boombox. It's a really helpful service I use every day for mixing and mastering work. I've left a link in the video description below. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.